in my practice for the last five years uh, in, in applying plant-based nutrition, uh, some of the critical factors that we found in terms of getting patients to change their lifestyle, particularly their nutritional lifestyle, is really to understand the value of doing so. You know, life oftentimes is a matter of value propositions. You know, what is it worth for me to get up in the morning and go to work? What am I trying to achieve? What is it worth for me to, to raise my child or children to become responsible adults? You know, what is it worth to do X, Y, and Z? And oftentimes we don't apply these same value propositions or make these same value propositions when it comes down to some of the most simple things in our life, such as what we put in our mouth every day. The rewards I've seen in my practice since I've been uh, using the plant-based nutrition um, are that my patients feel more empowered. My patients are more energized. They're, they're, they're happier. And they're, quote unquote, more satisfied customers. You know, oftentimes I get asked the question, uh, you know, how can you make money doing this in medical practice? I mean, here you are, you know, a cardiologist, and, and, and many people, you know, they pat me on the back and they say, oh boy, this is, you know, very altruistic and, and uh, you're doing a good job and, and you're really sacrificing and, and uh, what have you. Um, I think there's a greater economic value in helping people truly get better. Uh, your patients, you know, we, we've done things in our practice and we've innovated our practice in ways that instead of selling them, quote unquote, more pills and more surgical procedures, we figured out how to sell them more ways of improving their life. Uh, we put a restaurant in our, in our practice and so, you know, so we've given them healthy options of foods to eat. Uh, we have uh, food preparation classes and fitness classes and exercise classes. And these are the things that people need to maintain their health, to maintain their well-being. Uh, as opposed to changing their prescriptions and, and, and rescheduling procedures and the like on a regular basis, we've actually tried to change and, and, and have successfully done so, change our, our direction in helping people adjust their lives and maintain the best optimal health in their life. What we've seen in that as a result uh, we get more business referred to us, you know, from patients who are satisfied, you know, uh, family members, relatives, and the like. So we've seen success at various levels, success in the improvement of the health and well-being of our patients, and success in our growth of our practice to allow us to further pass this message uh, on to other people. And so I want to start tell you about some of the patients we've had in our practice uh, who've done remarkably well. One lady comes to mind. Uh, is a, a patient who came to see me a little over a month ago, maybe six weeks to be exact, and she had uh, many chronic illnesses, uh, diabetes. She had been on insulin for over 50 years. Uh, she had arthritis. She had uh, two knee replacements in the past and continued to have knee pain, back pain, and, and diffuse joint pain. She had high blood pressure, high cholesterol. She was on 20 medications, was weak, tired, feeling bad, constipated, and so she came to see us, and basically what she asked is, doctor, I need you to help me. You know, she's had just a myriad of problems and just said, just help me. And so we sat down and talked, and I looked over her medications, we did some diagnostic tests, evaluated her cardiac condition, and so I said, look, this is what we need to do, and I want you to start today, and these are the foods I want you to eat, and these are the foods I want you to avoid. I'm gonna see you back in two weeks. I had one of my wellness counselors sit down with her, as we typically do, and review her, uh, uh, review the details of the plan with her. And that very first day, we made adjustments in her medication, meaning that I reduced several. Saw her back in two weeks, she was great. Smile on the face, et cetera. So we made further medication reduction. She was off the insulin within the first couple of weeks. Uh, after making several medication adjustments, adjustments over three to four weeks, she went from 20 medications to two. Uh, I don't know, 30 pounds weight loss, I don't remember how much weight she lost. Uh, the remarkable thing about this patient is that she was 89 years old. You know, her energy level, you know, went through the roof. Uh, she, uh, her typical day began when she would go 5 o'clock in the morning, she was starting to be able to take her daughter to work, her granddaughter to school. Uh, she had a very active life uh, after this, so she started to do quite well uh, based on just changing the foods that she ate. She's independent living now, and she's doing great. Another patient of mine uh, <clears throat> started seeing us when she was 83. Uh, weak, tired, multiple medications, similar story, diabetes, 
uh, feeling sick, uh, we sat down and talked to her and said, look, I can adjust your medications. We can, you know, do more tests on your heart. But what you really need to do is to make some fundamental changes in your lifestyle, specifically in the way you eat. So we outlined that course of activity and she followed it. Over the course of two years, she lost over 100 pounds. And um, she came to me one day, in fact, it was last year. <clears throat> and so she was pretty excited. She said she was able to go to her granddaughter's graduation. The granddaughter went to Spelman uh, College. Now you may remember, this is in 2013, um, President Obama had uh, spoken at Morehouse College and the Surgeon General was speaking at Spelman College and so you can imagine the amount of traffic and activity that was in Atlanta at that time. She was able to go to all of the activities, all of the uh, parties and, 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 and graduation festivities, walking all over town without any problems, without any need for assistance, enjoying her granddaughter's uh, a graduation. That was something that was very meaningful me, to me because standard medical care would not allow her to do that. And that two year period of time, because she was already very debilitated when she, start, she started seeing us, and we know that debilitation progressed, she might not have been able to make the, uh, the graduation, let alone you know, move about and, 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 and have a higher quality of life. And, and, and I gave those two examples for the following reason. Oftentimes, you know, individuals say, well, you know, they're in their 80s, they're in their 90s, let them eat what they want. But the problem is, eating bad food is torture. And if you just make simple fundamental changes in how you nourish your body, then the body will start to heal itself and you start to have a higher quality of life. People say, well, I'm going to die of something anyway, so just let me enjoy my bad food and die. Well, I agree, we're all going to die. I tell my patients, yeah, you're going to die and I'm going to join you. But, but, but the truth of the matter is, is that we have so many years to live this life and you know, you may, you're not guaranteed to die you know, tomorrow if you eat bad food. You may live another 20 years, and that 20 years may be with back aches, or, or you may have a stroke and have to live in a nursing home, or, or, or et cetera. And so you need to improve the quality of your life for the sake of a better quality of life, not for the sake of, uh, not, you know, for the sake of uh, indefinite longevity. So those are examples I like to give because, you know, Eating proper food is ideal for any stage of life. And if you have, if, if the doctor said, if, if you knew that you only had six months to live or six days to live, it's worth it to eat the best food, to have the best six days or the best six months left on your, in your life.